London Airport, 17 hours flight from New York, but this constellation is still nearly two hours distant from Frankfurt, its goal. 45 minutes, that's the time limit for this high-speed transit stop service. Now we see how Anglo-American cooperation speeds an airliner on its way. No sooner have the passengers left than an extra earthing clip goes on. It's an additional precaution against static discharge as the petrol buzzers prepare to pump fresh lifeblood into the mighty ship. She's thirsty now, for the engines consumed about 5,000 gallons on the flight to cross the Atlantic. Figure out just what that would mean in pints. Meanwhile, the maintenance mechanics get busy on the great engines. They are guided by the flight engineer's report and now the other reports, mostly more lively. The cabin must be spick and span before the next 49 passengers come aboard. When she takes off, she may weigh as much as six London buses and they take no chances on being let down. Only 45 minutes, but nothing will be skipped on the engines or on the ground. That's the rule for a plane which must be fit to take off and fly an average of seven hours every day of the year. Testing, inspecting, so the maintenance work speeds on. Here they are siphoning off fuel to check for water content. In the cabin, it's contentment in the hearts of the incoming passengers that matters more than all else. Incidentally, they're working in light tapped off from a mobile power unit, now plugged into the nose of the ship. It's a way of saving the aircraft's batteries. You'll see that unit on couple when, after another 35 minutes' work, all's ready for takeoff. The crew of the aircraft have not been idle while all this bustle has gone on. There may be time to relax when their captain, Ray Wells, has collected the latest flying reports. Manifests, loading plans for passengers and freight, all are ready in a little cardboard bag. Next up for them is the weather bureau. Then maybe there'll be no time at all to sit back. So each man shoulders his full weight, whether it's the passengers or the machine that have to be fed. They'll top her up to 2,000 gallons for this last lap, although a quarter of that would see her through. Like the flight engineer with his dipstick, that's just the way they have of double-checking safety in the air. Towel racks to fill, a dozen and one toilet items to provide, toys and even bed socks before they're through. They'll need to get a move on now, the halfway mark, and still the empties aren't all out. And before she moves off, they'll need to clear that stack. What takes the longest time, fuel for the machine or food for man? Sooner or later, someone will design Bowser's in place of alloy canisters, but in the meantime, these canisters are the latest things designed. Wired for heating, each plugs in automatically to the aircraft's electric supply once it's in place. How are they making out? All tanks full? Cap safely screwed down? No leaks? Ignition faults? No damage to engine cowlings or reversible air screws? Ten minutes yet for takeoff, but here's the catch. Now the passengers must go on board. That's regulation, bless them. And now that mobile power unit I told you about. When she's uncoupled, the final link between ground and ship has gone. Now she can only speak by radio, but if you could hear her captain bid farewell to this old British ground crew, you'd hear him say, thanks London, 45 minutes away on time.